Okay, so in this video, we are going to take an exclusive first listen at a forthcoming track of mine, which is coming on a split EP on Donna Rue's Brocade label, on the Brocade Tracks sub-label. I've also got an EP coming out, a full solo release on this label as well. So um, yeah, I'll be doing track breakdowns of those at some point. This is a massively uh, Italo house style um, influence tune. There's a progressive house influence in there. It's certainly got a 90s feel. It's very deep. It's a deep house tune as well. Um, but there's there's some really good synth elements in it, I think. And I've had a lot of requests um, for this as an ID whenever I've played it out. I also put it in a, a Locust mix that I did not too long back. And uh, yeah, I just thought it'd be a good track to, to show you really because I think it's a, a sound certainly at the moment that's really popular with the Italo um, revival if you like but also I think it's a good track to show because there's some <clears throat> nice little techniques and, and especially in the synth work and the arrangement that I think will be useful to quite a few of the members so uh, the track is at 127 BPM the drums are not really loop based so there's lots of different elements and layers which is a little bit different to some of the track breakdowns I've done recently where I might be working on uh, with, a, with a loop for the groove this is mostly my own drums and there's quite a few different synth layers within here, which I think would be good to explore as well. So what I'm going to do, as always, is I'm going to play a big portion of the track for you to have a listen to so you can catch a vibe for what it sounds like. And then we're going to look at each individual element. We're going to look at the processing. We're going to look at the arrangement. And I'm just going to talk about my thought processes, really, with the, with the creation of the whole track. So um, I've, this has not been uploaded anywhere, this tune, at the time of posting this video. It's not even on pre-sale yet, so I thought it'd be really cool for you guys to have a listen, and I'd love to hear your feedback on what you think to the tune. So let's get stuck in. I'm going to play it from about here, and we'll just have a listen to how it sounds.
Okay, so I think you should uh, get a, f a good feel for how the track's laid out and stuff from that section. Um, as you can tell, it is really progressive and it's got that real Italian feel to it, which is what I was going for. I was listening to a lot of records from um, the early 90s at the time, labels like Interactive Test, for example. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's a track that I'm pretty happy with, but it was quite a while ago that I made this tune and I just want to say... When you hear the final version, it will sound slightly different with some of the synths because I had to take this from my old Mac. So any changes that I've done to the presets on the synths haven't carried over very well. And I've just started using the, the Waves subscription. And unfortunately, it hasn't carried over any of the delay settings. So I've got it as close as I could, but it will sound slightly different. But we'll go through it and we'll get the main gist of it anyway. So if I just solo the different main sections, main elements, we've got the drums here. With a kick. And the bass. So that's what carries the track mostly, but then I've also got a lot of synth work going on, so. So we've got these pads. And then we've also got this main sort of percussive chord, loop, uh, chord synth going on here. With the bass line. And quite a lot of the notes, so the bass line, if we look at it, there are different variations and we flip into two different bass lines, but for the most part, because it's kind of a progressive house track, there's not much notes. In, and in fact, it only really uses two notes for, for the most part in the tune. And, and it's sort of one of those tunes that creates a lot of tension. And um, a lot of the progressive stuff that I like to listen to, particularly from the era that influenced me with this tune, it holds a bass note and it feels as though it's gonna it's gonna go somewhere. So. That's kind of what's going on, and there's a lot of synths that are harmonizing with it, but there's not really so much mad progressions going on with chords. It's sort of holding the notes, and it's it's building tension throughout the whole tune, and then we're flicking into different sections that releases that tension, and we'll look at the arrangement as we go on. But let's start to break down the, the drum elements. So um, we'll start off with the kick. It's a really nice, punchy almost. There's quite a lot of top end on there. And I got this from, um, in fact, I'm going to have to use this kick again, I think, because I really like the sound of that. Super punchy. And the, and the way that I've managed to get the punch out of it is by using the drum bus. So you can see the settings that I've, I've used here. So if I turn that off, so this is just an Ableton plugin. It's really, it's still a nice sample, but when you put the drum bus on it and you push the drive up a little bit, push the crunch up and you select a certain frequency, and a bit of boom on there as well, and push the transients. It's a huge difference, not just in volume, but in the transient. So it's really going to cut through the mix. So um, the sample itself came from a Hyper Astral House preset uh, sample pack, and it's one of the, the kicks within that. So I'll be revisiting that pack actually. And this is why it's really good to go back onto old tunes. I mean, this is probably a tune that I made uh, almost a year ago, perhaps. And, um, you know how it is with vinyl, things take a lot, a lot, a long time to come out. Um, so yeah, with the bass line, we've got this going on. So we've got that really nice low end groove happening. So in terms of um, the EQ that I've done on it, I've taken out everything in the bottom end. I wanted it to not have too much sub impacts because I wanted to have that old school feel. And you'll notice that some of these tunes, they don't have too much going on in the sub areas. Um, and that's what I was aiming for. Then I've just made sure the kick's in mono. It's just standard practice, really. So uh, we've also got these offbeat hats, which I've kept out of the group. So again, they've come from that Astral House sample packs. So really nice, clean samples. I've again used the drum boss on this. So uh, I've pushed the crunch up and the drive. There's no boom on this though. And then I've taken out some resonances and everything below sort of 500 hertz I didn't want kicking about. I've panned each of the samples 
uh, left and right by about 5%. Um, so not too much. And then I've also added on the add some random velocity tool, which is part of Ableton's MIDI effects, which just gives it a bit more of a human feel. So if we go into the velocity, it just randomizes the velocity. And obviously the velocity is how hard we're hitting those notes. So if we wanted it to sound a bit more human and a bit less machine driven, which I really wanted with this track because a lot of the Italo stuff is sort of played in uh, and a bit more, has a bit more of a live feel, but it's really subtle. And I tend to do that on drums quite a bit. So uh, we've also got this. Um, so in terms of the processing on, on the group of the drums, there's nothing at all. You know, I've done it all the processing individually and I've heavily used the drum bus on this. Now I usually use decapitator and stuff for saturation and, and to bring things out, but I'm gonna start using the drum bus again, I think, because the drums in this track in particular are really punchy and you can, it's such a simple little plugin to use, but you get some really, you get some really good results from it. So I've got this snare sample, which is a 909 snare, which has come from a Jamie Anderson underground tech house pack. Again, really nice, clean sample. If I solo that, that's lovely. And then I've sent it to a, a reverb, which is this send here. So, um, in terms of the processing, like I say, we've got the drum bus on there again. I've also used the Echo Boy. So if I turn off the processing, I'll turn off the drum bus, turn off the EQ and the Echo Boy. I wanted the snare in mono as well, but we'll just take that off for now. So let's have a listen. So the process is really important in this. So let's start with the drum bus. So we're really pushing the transients, a bit of crunch on there, taking out some of the bottom end and pushed some of the some of the uh, the real top to give it some some more like air and some more clarity in the tops. Then I've added Echo Boy, which gives it that stereo snapback feel, but I, I did then realize that we had too much stereo stuff going on, so I put in the mono. But listen to that slapback that we've got from this. So I use the 80s snare slap. So I use this a lot when I'm making electro, so it's like a, it's it's got that nice, it works amazingly on like a 909 or an 808 snare just to give it some character and to push it out into the sides but obviously i've gone for a mono uh, a mono sample this time but if we were to just like works really nicely with the kick that's why i wanted to boost the top a little bit so that it just sort of has its own presence next to the kick uh and that's it in terms of the processing on the snare. And let's have a look at the patterns. So there's quite a lot of snare rolls happening and they happen sort of every 16 bars. So fills like that are really good to keep your arrangement moving. So if we were to just take a little listen to how that works, we've got these little double snares in there as well. So if I zoom in, helps with the groove a lot. And then a little variation here with this roll. And um, I've just drawn in some manual um, velocity automation just to give it sort of that human feel. Um, I've pitched the sample up a little bit here, but honestly, it's super simple. These little rolls, I think, are a big feature of the track if you listen to it in context with everything else. <laughs> Really groovy stuff. So moving on to the clap then, this is just basically um, copying the same pattern as the snare, it's just to give it a bit more thickness. And I've not really processed it much it's apart from just taking out the bottom end. And I've also put this in mono as well. Um, but if you just listen to it on its own, it's really low in the mix. So you always can't hear it's there, but if you would take it, take it away. And add it. Just an extra little bit of thickness. I really like to layer samples actually because I think it gives, uh, as I say, a lot more thickness. So, but I didn't follow the rolls with that. I wanted that just to be the snare. So we've got various different hat layers. We've looked at this offbeat hats one. So let's just listen to just the hats on their own. So all of these channels and they're all playing together here.
So it's got a progressive and a rolling feel to it. There's there's lots of hats going on, but it's not too in your face. I haven't just chucked like a massive open hi-hat in there that's going to overpower it. It just sort of chugs along, really. So let's take each of the layers. So if we start with this one, that's like your open hat. I got this from uh, Turbo Samples Hot Creative Tech House Sample Pack, this one. And yeah, it's, it's, I've pitched it up a little bit. I've really shortened it. So if you pull the full sample out, just wanted it to be a bit shorter. And then I've used this Transient Shaping Enhancer, which is part of the drum bus presets in Ableton. And I've just tweaked the presets a little bit. What it does is it just helps you cut through the mix a little bit. And then I've gone in, taken out a resonance that I didn't like quite harshly and taken out the bottom end. Again, Mostly all of the drums here are being sent to this to this reverb send that I've got here, which is a um, a Fab Filter Pro R, which I use mostly for my drums. But that's it. There's your open hat. Nothing fancy there. Then I've also got a closed hat in here, and this is following the same pattern. But you'll see at points we haven't got the open hi hat all the time, so we needed something. But it's really low in the mix. So just as an added layer, we've also got this third hat channel, which follows two different types of patterns. So it, it it's used as like, like a rolling hat there. No velocity changes, really. Um, just simple. just to keep it chugging along in the main sections but then we've actually got this here for a bit of variation it bounces around three different samples these little closed hat one shots which works really nice I think in this section so the way it falls into it changes in the when the drop happens again all of these drums they're, they're sort of really subtle in the in the uh, in the mix but it's the layers and all of them together that work so I've essentially just been creating my own top loops the only loops that I've used in this uh, which we'll get to in a sec is just some percussive loops like the bongos and congas obviously I find that when you use loops for that sort of thing they tend to be a bit more live and human feeling which is what I was going for. So we've got the crashes. Now, if you look here on this channel, we've got quite a lot of crashes happening because we're flicking in between different sections constantly. We've got these fills that happen so often in the tune and the crashes are part of that. So let's just listen to an example here. And then, so at points, we've just got these three crashes and then at other points, like when we're going into a big change, we've got these. And then also here. And processing wise, I've just shortened it so it's a nice short crash. I've sent it to the reverb. I've taken out a bit of the top end and a resonance that I didn't like and also rolled out the bottom end. So we've also got these bongos, which um, I just used a loop from Zero G Gloss. So I'll just search my library for conga and bongo loops. This was originally in a 100 BPM, but I've obviously time stretched it to be in time with the, with the tube. And again, this, this conga loop, but what I have done, and it's a really good trick this, if you're using two different loops for stereo width, pan one left and pan one right, so then you get this. Nice and wide. And they complement each, each other, those, those, uh, those loops. Again, I'm not entirely sure where the second loops come from, if I'm being honest, but, if we, but um, yeah, it's just your standard longer loop, really. And this, then this tambourine, which has come from 
another location in my library which I'm not I'm not sure on because it's uh, basically been consolidated because I've changed the transients a little bit and tightened it up on both of them. So um, yeah, and in in terms of the the processing on these, that's it. It's just a little bit of EQ pan, and that's that's your lot. So that's the whole drum, whole drums there. So uh, nice and simple, but there's a lot of groove, and all those different layers make up the drums. So um, yeah. The next thing, let's move on to the, the bass line. So. so that's the main bass line, really simple. We've also got this next little bass line. Which is a little bit darker. And then we go back into this. So two bass lines two notes in each bass line and super simple. So how have I come up with the sound? Well, I, I've just used a preset from Albino 3. It's a deep SH bass, which sounds like a nice 101, nice round bass line. I've tweaked the preset a little bit. It'll probably sound more different than the original because I've got tried to get close to it. Uh, but obviously it's um, not carried by uh, my settings over. We've also got this track spacer, which I use. So a couple of members have been asking how this works. I've mentioned it a few times, but I'll just go over it again. So what it does is it, I'm receiving a side chain from the kick. So, so what it's doing is it's sending this, the, the signal from the kick to the track spacer, and it's moving the frequencies out of the way of the kick in the baseline so that we haven't got a clash and we haven't got this horrible farting in the bottom end, which you tend to get when this sounds occupying the same frequency area. It's the best, uh, in my opinion, it's the best side chaining tool that I've used, but there's lots of other things out there. There's a, a Nicky Romero um, one where, where it sort of does side chaining. You could just use a side chain compressor. Uh, there's one called LFO tool where you can shape a space for the kick to sit in. What I've found with the other ones though is if you really are pushing it hard, you're gonna get a pumping effect across the whole frequency range. Whereas this gives you the option to sort of only affect the bottom area. So, so you, you're leaving the other frequencies to um, to just be, be be normal and not be pumping the whole signal. So I find it's just a lot cleaner and yeah, a great little plugin um, worth buying. Not very expensive either. So that's it. I've also added on a saturator and made sure that the bass is in mono. So if I take the saturator off, add it, just gives it a bit more grip. And then because it's a bass line, we want to make sure it's in mono. I mean, I could have gone in and just turned the bass mono on and just done it that way, but I think I just wanted the bass in mono because there's not too much mid-range on it anyway. So it's not a huge problem. So let's have a listen to the synth group then. So we've got that perky little synth. We've got this one, some strings, the main synth loop, this alternate perk synth, this proggy art. Which is slightly different in the in the final version, but you know, just so you can get a, an idea, this little arp thing, and this harmony chord as well. Some chords here as well, like organy chords, percussive things. So I was going for this old FM style percussive synth. Um, vibe on this and what's really great at doing that and all of these synths including the bass line I've come from Rob Papen's Albino 3 so let's start with this we've got this perk synth one here so the tracks in a minor and in terms of like the the actual notes really simple So this was a, an arpeggiator preset within Albino. It's called, it's actually the first sound that you that you get when you open up the plugin. So it's called 130 BPM Groover Arp. So you can see that when I'm holding the note, it's playing an arpeggiated pattern. And then we've just got these single notes as well. Really simple. I've used Waves H delay plugin just to create like a you know a nice eighth delay, and uh, then the EQ just to take out the bottom end and a bit of the top. 
simple as. So as I always mention in the videos, call and response is really important. So let's... So that second phrase of the of the vocal, which we'll get to, just fills out and it's like a call and response with the vocal, I think, yeah, so it sounds quite nice. We've also got all of these different synths talking to each other, really. So again, you've got the, the question. They're all sort of speaking to each other, and this is honestly the best tunes I've written are where I'm really paying attention to how everything sits and talks to each other and how the groove all plays off each other as you know off, off itself and things like that. So we've also got this scratch sample, which is part of that call and response. Watch your, watch your, watch your, watch your. So when you play it the whole track. and then we flick into something else. So everything has its own space, everything is bouncing off each other, and that's how you create a wicked groove. So often I get, like, how do you create grooves? And, and this is it, it's, it's having everything in its own place. So, um, okay, so we've gone through that perk synth, that's the first little, little synth. We've then got this proggy arp. So I've used the Waves H reverb on it. I've used a bit of the H delay as well. I've done some EQ on it just to take out the bottom end. And it's again a preset called A2 Sounds in the Moving Sounds category on Albino. Um, there's a bit of panning on all the synths to give them their own space in the mix. That's it, really. We've got this layer. That reminds the, the synth, and that reminds me of a scuba song called Adrenaline, which is such a nice tune. It may even be the same preset, I think it is. Um, that wasn't intentional, but now I listen to it on its own, it sounds like that. <laughs> so I've used um, Albino again for this sound. This is pitched down by five semitones. And again, it's a really simple little, you can hear there's a bit of, mod bit of modulation on there. We'll look at what how I've done that. So uh, yeah, it's, it's a preset from Albino. It's called Trancy Mod Wheeler. So when you push the mod wheel, you get a little bit of uh, modulation on it. Really subtle, but you can hear it. And then to emphasize it, I've got a little bit of phaser on here. So I've used Ableton's phaser and this phaser particle alliance. And then I've just controlled the dry wet. So we get a nice little bit of phase there to give it some stereo width. I've done a bit of EQ. There's two EQs on there, one to boost certain frequencies. And then just this one, just to cut around the areas that aren't needed to make sure there's nothing kicking about that shouldn't be. Again, nice bit of panning on there. Um, I have actually uh, also used the hybrid reverb from um, from Ableton for this, which is good. I've used a stock dub preset. For whatever reason, I've just used a lot of Ableton's plugin with this tune, and um, yeah, it's what you know. It's it's all you need sometimes. But I have used it again the the waves delay on that synth. So with these arps. Now you'll hear with this delay, you've got this analog noise that it adds in. I quite like that. Obviously you don't want to overdo it and have it on every single one, but I think sometimes if you go for that old school feel, that extra little bit of noise, analog sound uh, works well. And this is such a good reverb. Um, so I can't recommend enough getting the Waves package. Like I say, they do a, um, currently do a monthly subscription. Which is which is new. You didn't used to be able to do that, so definitely worth checking out. Uh, so up here, just an extra little little sound again. That's come from driver mod wheel preset. Not much from the way of processing, just some delay on there, and these strings.
loads of movement on there. So I've sent it to uh, quite a wide reverb um, send. And we've also got a lot of processing going on. So let's break this down. So how have we got that much movement? Well, first of all, the, we've used a bright strings preset. And then watch what's happening to the automation on the, on the strings. We've got some frequency cutoff um, automation, which just gives it the sense of movement. Then I've also done this add some random thing here. So basically what that's doing is just the, it's going to randomize some of the velocities to give it like a more live human feel, um, but very subtle. And then I've used um, this random chords generator plugin, which is excellent actually. And all that's doing is creating chords. So the track's in A minor, so I've set the scaler to A minor. I've then gone in and, ch and set the chord to minor seven. And so it's basically just two notes, but it's playing chords within it. So that's how I've come up with the chords. Don't need any music theory knowledge for that, which is really handy. Um, and then also you've got this filter from Arturia called M12, which is, if I push up the, um, like the dry wet, you'll hear what it's doing. Like this. I'm just keeping it fairly subtle. But yeah, it's really nice to add movement. And then I've gone and added in an EQ, which is just taking out the bottom end. I've also got another EQ on there, which is boosting um, around 2K and just a further cut to make sure nothing's sitting around the bottom that should be. I've also, to add even more movement, used the subtle phaser preset, which is part of uh, Fab Filters Volcano. Just again, it's just like a modulating filter with phaser. And I've added in from one of Ableton's reverb plugins, just again, the stutter dub preset. And then I've added in some panning, really subtle, but that's how you just get this nice pad with tons of movement. And with everything else, So yeah, that's how you can get your strings with nice nice and wide, lots of movement. So we've got the main sort of hook of the track. So I've used this again, so it's minus seventh chords, and it's just playing two notes in a nice little rhythm. Well, listen to how it talks to the bass line. So it's in between the bass notes, which is really helping with the groove. And if you add the drums in. And all I've done is copied this bass line and nudged the notes along and then made it into a chord. So when I was writing the track, that's all I did. And that's how you just created this nice little groovy main hook, essentially. And it's part of this percussive synth um, category and it's the first preset in there called bass rimba and i've used that in the future that's it's really nice preset um and that just carries carries throughout the track i think there is actually a filter on there just taking out the top end and then we're taking out the bottom end as well a little bit of eq just to give it some some brightness um but that's basically it and that just happens at different points in the track so this perk synth <laughs> And that's just um, basically, again, another preset from the arpeggiated sounds, and it's just playing. Two notes. And it's pitched down by five semitones as well. Really simple. And I've sent that to the reverb. Then we've got these chords, which is just click and chord because of synth preset. No processing whatsoever, apart from taking out the bottom end. Then this harmony chord. Again, these are all panned as well. So we've got this phaser, which is moving. It's like a doubler. It's in doubler mode. 
that's giving it the sense that it's moving across the stereo field. Quite harshly EQ'd. Don't be scared to really just shape the sound using an EQ. Just use your ears. You can pull details out like this, which is what I've done. Then we've got this dizziness preset on this auto panner. Really helps to give the sense of movement in the stereo field. Further bit of EQ. Well, simple stuff, you know, there's nothing really magic going on. Um, so we've got this little effects stab, all I've got this effects hit. Really subtle in the mix though. And this scratch sample, which I took from uh, Cold Cut Theft Appella. So it's just this. Just a playful little sample really, just to fill things out. Then we've also got this uh, unknown Do You Love is the acapella. <coughs> I can't remember exactly where I got it from, but I think I got an acapella pack and it's like from an old tune. Um, and yeah. It was originally a tantra on that, but again, that hasn't copied through. But yeah, there's just various different... Or, um, but with the effects on in the original, you'll hear it sounds slightly different. And then I took this pad sample. We've also got this texture as well, which came from a hyper techno arps and sequences. And I added on the phase mistress um, from sound toys to this. So I'll take that off. It just emphasizes the phase and stuff on there, so. And then again, this a little bit quieter. And then just a little atmosphere layer. Sat underneath, heavily EQ'd. Fill out the, uh, the gaps. So, if I could show you just the um, the arrangement, it might be useful. So we've got this. I usually start a track with a kick, but in this case, I've like just stripped the kick out. And we get the kick, but no snare or clap. And then that's when we hear the clap and the snare. Bass line it. About 45 seconds in. And there's no magic to it really. You just find a section and then you flip into a different section. And to keep the arrangement interesting, you've just got these little fills in there. And then we've got a different section. And then again. And then to build tension before the drop, we've got this. We take the bass line out. So the vocal comes in in the breakdown as a new element because we've taken away quite a lot here, including the kick and the, the bass line. Um, then we've got... It's like a, weirdly, if we're talking about songwriting, that's like a pre-chorus or, or a bridge or a middle eight or something. And that's just building tension. And then we do that more, but with different elements. And then here we drop back into, but it never really does resolve itself, I don't think, this tune, which is, it's a bit uncomfortable, to be honest. And um, I guess that was intentional. It's not one of those tunes where, like, we have a big resolve, it's, it's a progressive tune. And then we're just flicking between sections. We have this little kind of breakdown, I suppose. And 
and then we take out the baseline here and we'll drop it back into that section which is um, just a little bit more stripped back final breakdown outro really simple so we're taking out elements we're flicking in between variations and just just controlling the elements really um so yeah hopefully it's been insightful seeing my next forthcoming release and um as i say it'd be really good to hear feedback from you all and uh, hopefully it's been useful so uh, yeah thanks for watching and i will be doing more trap breakdowns on my brocade my second brocade release which is going to be out hopefully late this year but i'll do a little exclusive first um run through of those as well nice one guys